of late i know that most people want to relocate to other places not uk one of the you know most loved places beside the u.s is canada people feel like canada is just like u.s but safer uh, yes. so it's a good option for most people and i brought you how you can relocate to canada as a nurse i brought you videos on how you can relocate to canada as a care assistant i brought you videos about how you can relocate to canada as an unskilled worker today mm -hmm. i'm bringing you how you can relocate to canada as a medical laboratory scientist if you're trained in africa or anywhere else <laughs> we have a very special guest here mr kabwa Boateng. he is Ghanaian, and uh, for those who don't know the name yeah. and he is a youtuber as well i will leave his youtube page and i'll leave a link in the description as well so that after this you can reach out to him or go get more information from his youtube channel so mr kabinawati thank you so much for coming briefly who are you and how did you land in canada and what exactly do you do i think we share one thing in common we are both in the healthcare and we are both live in the western world uh, my name is kubina Bolton, as you have said moved to canada uh 1997 so that was hey! a long <laughs> I saw yes yeah. Hey. Yeah. So I came here. I was very fortunate. My dad brought me. I did all my education here, high school, and went to college three years. Did four years university. I also hold my MBA for three and a half years, and I'm actually a laboratory technologist by profession. And currently, I'm a manager at a hospital running a laboratory. <laughs> that's right, that's yeah. right. So, since you schooled in Canada, do you have colleagues that schooled outside Canada? And can you share their pathway for us? Uh, there's one specific individual that came. Uh, fortunately, his wife sponsored him to come in as a permanent residence. Okay. You also have individuals that might apply to a school right away from Ghana or anywhere in Africa or anywhere across the globe, and they will come to Canada. But once you actually get here, either through school or sponsorship through marriage, there are certain criteria that you have to go through to actually become a licensed medical laboratory technologist. So uh, here, if you actually land here for the school system, you can either go to a college for three years or you can actually go to a university for four years. It's equivalent. I would say once you actually finish the college level or the university level and you write the exams and you pass, you can be called MLT, Medical Laboratory Technologist. So there's no really difference between the degree or the college level. The pay rate, it starts the same. So in a nutshell, those are some of the pathways that individuals can actually come to Canada and become a laboratory technologist. Let's say for those who want to come to the UK to practice as medical laboratory technologists, they have to write setting exams, they have to apply online to the, the board in the UK for mm -hmm. allied health professionals and pay some amount of money, submit some documents, and then they can straight away come here. Even if they don't have any partner who's sponsoring them, there's a pathway for them. Right. Do you have something like that in Canada where I can just apply without having a spouse there who's going to sponsor me, without coming through education? Do you have another way you can just go online, apply, submit documents, write an exam, and, and, and work? I would say in the medical laboratory profession, it's a bit premature. Uh, the nurse Nurses have that pathway, but for the medical laboratory technologies, to my knowledge, you will have to actually come here and then go through the program. And even once you come here to actually be licensed, it's quite a bit of a, a steep. You got to go through prior learning assessment and so forth and so forth. Because here, you know, you have to register with a college. For example, if you live in Ontario, where I live, you have to register with the CMLTO and all those uh, college bodies. So for e either to get that license, you need to actually be here, do some prior learning assessment, and then be able to actually get a job in the field. So to my knowledge, this is the format that we have in here currently. But for those who go through the school routes, for them, right after school, they qualify, or? Yeah, once you've done the schooling, then you write, write the national exams from the CSMLS, Canadian Medical Laboratory Association. Once you write the exams, then after the exam, that doesn't mean you are done. Then you also have to register for a college, depending on which province you live. So if you live in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, British Columbia, 
there's a different college that you have to join. We have the national exams, and then you have to register with the college based on, on your specific jurisdiction as well. And then, is it college where I have to go to school again or what? No, it's just a college body. Like, it's a, it's a body, like a registration body, yes. Okay, and then after that, you can look for a job and then start working. After that, massive job. So many jobs everywhere. There's some places they pay $60 an hour. It's just so many jobs out there. Yes. Wow. So uh, do you also have top-up programs where, let's say, I can come and do a one-year master's um, medical laboratory program and then after that try and do the registration is that also possible i think the best route is maybe i'll take this opportunity to, to explain so you have come from africa or a different place and you want to become a licensed medical technologist the first thing that you do is you're going to go to csmls website which is a canadian uh, association of medical laboratory science and then you're going to submit your document online over there Okay. And then they're going to review these documents. And based on that, they can determine that because if you look at the medical laboratory science field, there's five different categories. You have hematology, chemistry, blood transfusion, microbiology, and histology. So based on the assessment that they do, they're going to actually factor in your education. They're going to factor in your qualification from back home. And based on those assessments, they can actually guide you and say, you know what, maybe you need to take classes in hematology. You need to focus on chemistry so they can tailor your study based on the assessment that they did and they'll have a plan for you. And once they have the plan for you, they will give you up to two years to complete it. You have one year to upload all your documents. And once that is done, you have two years to actually go through that learning plan they gave you. And then once that you finish, you'll be eligible to go right for the exams and once you've done with the exams, you can actually register to become a medical lab technologist. So in a nutshell, that is the process that we actually go through in Canada to become licensed to be qualified. The thing about Canada is everything is so complicated, like, but I will leave the website here so that I'm sure when people go there and then they actually even go through the website, you'll probably find more information. And then yes. if you have any other questions as well, they can reach out to you. On yes. The so what is it like working as a medical laboratory technologist in Canada? What time do you usually start work and how is it like? What are the shift patterns like and what exactly do you do? Yeah, it's, it's a very fantastic uh, place to actually be in. We are the fourth largest healthcare professional in Canada. Okay. So for example, if you take the doctors, the nurses, the lab used to be number three and now we're kind of bumped down to number four. So it's a very big profession. And you can either work in the private sector or you can work in the hospital sector. So the majority of the people, they will work in the hospital sector. And usually with the private sector, uh, the pay might be slightly a little bit less, but if you work in a hospital, then you can actually make a little bit of money. Plus you also have the union at the hospital level. So the union will be able to negotiate for your salary and so forth and so forth. So overall, what I always encourage people is that if you're somebody you don't want to go to nursing because you don't want to work on the bedside, then definitely you can actually get into the lab and get into the field. The pay rate is not that much of a difference between nurses and medical lab technologists. So I really strongly encourage people. It's a very, very lucrative field as of the moment. What is the average salary, let's say, per annum for medical laboratory technologists? Yeah, so like this is not a secret. It's actually on the website. And I was reviewing the CSMLS uh, website on the average as an entry level medical lab technologist, depending on which province that you live in. For example, in Ontario, the average is about $34, $36 an hour just to start as an entry level. And there's always a cap. So we have a eight years. So every year you go on a different band, similar to the UK. So after the eight years, you can reach about $48 to $50 an hour in Ontario. Provinces like Alberta, they pay a little bit more, maybe two, three dollars a bit more. If you go to Nova Scotia or Saskatchewan, because of the living standard, it might be slightly less. So depending on which province you might find yourself in, but on the average, you can look to start about $34 to $36 an hour as an entry level, and you can go as high as $48 to $50 as a cap. Hey, Mr. Kabinabwa, then you have money because... <laughs> no, <I'm> not... <laughs> 
I was suspecting that yours is like 70 and hour. Hey. <laughs> I see, I see. And what about the annual? The annual, like if you're making 36 an hour, probably that can translate to about maybe 70 or more uh, a, a year, which is pretty uh, decent as a new graduate. That's a very decent, especially if you live at home. And if you find yourself in certain provinces or certain areas where they're very, very short, you can do massive overtime and they will give you all this incentive. For example, places like Dryden recently, they were just kind of like bombarding people if you want to move there, accommodations and so forth and so forth. So definitely is an area to really, uh, if anyone might be interested in, I think it's worth it. Okay. And then the monthly take home on that 35 an hour will be around how much? Yeah, about 3,000, 3,200 a monthly home Canadian dollars. Okay. How many hours is it usually do you work in a day? How many days a week do you usually work as a medical laboratory technology? By the labor law, 37.5 that you can actually work. Okay. So that's like three days each week and sometimes four days a week. Oh. No, majority of the work is just uh, 7.5 hours, five days a week. Okay. You do work on the weekends, you do work on the evening shift, and also you work on the night shift. But that also depends on which hospital you are, because certain hospitals, some people might work, like to work all the night shift. So in that case, you might be lucky to get a day shift. If you work in histology or microbiology, those are not 24 hours lab. So those areas you can actually work day shift and kind of like finish and go home. So a lot of people sometimes goes to microbiology or histology based on those particular shifts and just to, you know, help with your family life also. So what would you say will be the main challenge in your profession? The main challenge will be sometime working in a core lab. Uh, the core lab meaning that I just described we have five disciplines. So if you are working in microbiology, very specialized area, you can focus on that area, work your 30 years and, you know, walk home with a good pension. Or you can work in histology area, one department. But sometimes when you find yourself in a very small community lab or hospital, then you might have to do all those different areas, which is the rotation. So, for example, you might be working in a night shift, you're doing chemistry, hematology, blood bank and all these things together. So that can be very, very stressful if you find yourself in those areas. But overall, I think these people are very trained to be very competent and sort of know what you're doing. But I think if I would like to highlight one of those challenges, it will be one of those areas. Wow. Would you say Canada is a good place for migrants? What's the whole racism issue like? That's a really good question. If you take Miami, for example, Toronto, I would say is the most multicultural city in the world. And currently on December 14th, we just changed our main center, uh, Young and Danda Square to Sankofa Square, which is actually a Ghanaian name. They actually changed. So that's the heart of Canada. It has a Ghanaian name. Danda Square, which is set to have a new name in just a few weeks. Let's go live to see 24s Courtney Heels for more on this story. Courtney, what is that new name? Uh, Sankofa Square, that is what this advisory committee has decided on. Uh, it is uh, in Ga from Ga Ghana, excuse me. Uh, also acknowledging that the name originates and refers to the act of reflecting and renaming teaching from the past. This was important to the committee. And Do they understand what Sankofa means? Oh, yes. He went through some panel review. There were four names in contention and finally they chose that name so that kind of goes to tells you how appreciative and how receptive canada is beside miami toronto is a capital diversity of the world and very very receptive in the sense that what i've learned since i moved here very young is that canada has a template and it's a very simple to be successful you come here obey the rules go to school finish get a job get married and buy a house and just live comfortably. Very basic fundamentals and I think it applies to most places. So if you go through those paths and you do your things right, yes, people will open the door for you. So definitely racism exists. Yes, it exists everywhere. But I believe if you do the fundamentals and also work on yourself and your skills and what is necessary, the society will accept you. And I think Canada is no different from any other place. Wow, please somebody said I should ask if you're married. <laughs> yes, I'm really married. I have two boys. Yeah, actually, my wife hey, is in there. You said I'm really married. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice, nice, nice. 
what be your final word to anybody that's contemplating on whether to move to Canada or not? Yeah, actually, I had my YouTube channel. I just changed the name. It was called Presenting Canada to the World. And I will probably, I have traveled around also. I've been to Europe and USA. And you did a very nice video <laughs> about if US was overrated. Uh, Canada is sort of in between Britain and US, right? Like not too high as US and, you know, and not too very conservative as the UK. <laughs> hey, is that not so, too high as US and not too, then he paused. He's not too low as you. <laughs> no, 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 conservative. So I think uh, we're sort of like in the middle. So if you're looking for a very good life balance, then definitely I will say this is the place for you. Number one reason, very family oriented, right? If you come here, you have a child here right away, the yeah, citizen, they start re uh, receiving the government money and the funding. So safety, I know you highlight that in your video. You don't have to have a problem in Canada when it comes to safety. Education, very, very, very top notch. And also, I would like to highlight this also. I believe everywhere you go, they also have a fundamentals in place. But I believe Canada is one of the places where individuals like myself and immigrants can actually rise up to a very high level. And what I mean is that you have a lot of prominent Ghanaian young guys here. These people are doing so well multiple houses and all these things. And because of the fundamentals that we have in place, the government has set for us. And I think it's very, very beneficial. So if anybody is watching me and they're looking for a place to go, it's not just only your career, but you can actually get into other things to actually enhance you as an individual to also help other people. So I think that's one thing I really praise about Canada because of the blueprint that we have in place. Hey, ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Kamala Bwate. So, guys, definitely, I'm very sure that we cannot exhaust everything about the entire process. So, I'll leave Kamala Bwate in social media handles and then his YouTube channel on the screen. You can reach out to him, and then I'm sure he would, you know, respond to your query. So, thank you so much for coming. Okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.